Um, I'm defeated. I'm going home. 68? There's zero. Oh. <laughs> Where are you at? We have been waiting for 20 minutes. 45 minutes. Uh, please, I'm very scared that the profile comes. Like. Yeah, the profile will intro. Okay. Actually, our host is today. So, y'all just take over the episode. Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> what do you think of today's uh, <laughs> wedding? Oh, wow. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Don't hide your face! I just want to let everybody know that my cap cost $35 this morning. Oh. Why? <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hi, Nicole. Yes, I am. Hi, hi. How do you feel about today's student hustle? I'm quite excited. I have like no clue what's going on. But do you frequently like come to the park? Have you spotted anything? Never monitor lizard law. Anything like higher up? <laughs> so bad! Monkeys! Monkeys! Oh my god! <laughs> Um, so we have a project that's funded by Mandai Nature to study on the critically endangered Raffles banded langurs. Okay. So it's this monkey that's only found in Singapore and Malaysia. I don't think you've seen it before, right? No, I have not. But they were asking me to guess what I see around here. Then I was like, um, monitor lizards. <laughs> At least you didn't say Komodo dragons. <laughs> we want to collect data. We can collect their poop also. He's so much collecting poop. Lots to do today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested to know like how do they contribute to Singapore's like biodiversity? They would eat the fruits and they would help to disperse the seeds. At the same time, they actually eat the seeds to prevent them from being dispersed. Their contribution to the ecosystem is the maintenance of the balance of the diversity of the different plant species that we have. So whenever we are out here, we will try to take photographs of the langur so that we can try to identify individuals and monitor their growth. Yeah, so. So, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lenga is about double the size of the long-term macaque. Like the everyday. The, the common oh, one at the periphery of the forest. It's mostly black in colour, but it has um, white colour bands. You have to look high up, slowly follow and be quiet and take photographs. Hello. So while we go and check our cameras, yeah, now I need to go and No leh, I'm like very concerned now that I'll fail. I see a bird! I'm looking at a bird, but it's a bit dark. Okay, I got it. Square rock! Wow! The hell? I'm a nature photographer eh. Wow, I think it would be like striking go eh, if I see the monkey. Can you help me eh, I got three of your... It does one there. No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyhow! <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> so now we are trying to check our motion sensor camera to see if over the past couple of months uh, there were any animals in this area. Woohoo! Ah! Take out the SD card. Yeah, I think the angle is still okay. Oh, they have a text there. Woo! You see there? It's a young one and an adult one. Um, I'm defeated. I'm going home. 68? There's zero. <gasps> Animals! Where? No, I'm saying y'all. <laughs> oh, Yay! Hey, y'all lie to me lah. There are no langers here. <laughs> yes, there are. Very hard to spot lah. They're, they're probably looking at you. <laughs> I got a squirrel. That's I'm nice. Good. Good. No, this this shot quite quite nice. Um, and then I got a bird. I don't know what bird it is. Ah, that's a racket tail jungle. Actually, if you see this bird, right, chances are like there might be macaques or <laughs> langurs there. I was focusing on the wrong thing. All right. So now we are done with that. Then we will go look for monkey poop. Yeah! <laughs> this is a solid piece, I gotta say. <laughs> first time? Yeah, first time. <laughs> In fact, yes! I mean, this time you know that it's a macaque poop. Mm. We would usually bring it back to the lab. You'll be doing the analysis to find out more about what the animal eats, mm. how's the health. So there's a container and then some gloves. This kind of like tweezer thingy. Mm. And then you pick up, then so you put in the container. I use my hands lah. I know lah. No. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm only gonna do this once. <laughs> It's a bit wet. You cannot say too much because saliva will work. Hey, sorry, sorry. Okay, can you put inside? Why don't you do the layer? Oh, there's a fly! Oh no, you want to release the fly? Should we? He wants to be inside! Oh, okay, got it. Very good, very good. So I wanted to ask, if we're looking for langurs, how come we're collecting the 
not even this food. So in a way, we can compare their diet. How do they compete for resources or how do they share their resources in the forest? Cool. Cheers guys! It's been a very hot day for Cheers. me. Cheers! Not used to it. <laughs> Okay, so I think the first thing I'm really curious about is like how you guys got into this profession. It's not an everyday job, right? I really like monkeys since I was a child mm. because of a pet monkey that I had before. We don't know that it's illegal. This monkey was probably not happy. Mm. Eventually, with the help of um, Acres, we managed to raise funds and raise, uh, send it back to Africa. Mm. So I think that experience just got me interested to find out more about primates in general. Mm. How can we help? And how about you? Mine, I mean, same like Indy, uh, but I didn't, didn't know no, like I, so I, I, no, no, I didn't, <laughs> okay. I was mainly from my grandma. We watched a lot of documentaries together. While I was doing my, my, my degree, I actually was working part-time with the zoo as a zookeeper. Mm. And that's where I worked more with primates. Prior to this meeting, I didn't know that um, langurs were endangered, right? The question is like, what makes your work like important? It's true, you don't really care about something you don't understand. You show pictures, oh, I didn't know it exists, oh, very cute. That's about it. Mm. But if they know that, oh, this forest, they actually, you know, seen it before, they understand the threat. If this forest is going to be gone for, say, a development, they might then say, oh, can we know, can we don't do it? Yeah. Because it's dear to them. Yeah. There's forum, then nature groups engagement. All the more, it empowers people to decide what they want Singapore to be like. Are there any, like, struggles or, like, you cannot find shit? <laughs> Maybe the most recent memory is the road kill of the langer. A few years ago, we started to advocate for some measures, uh, road calming measures, or putting maybe road bridges, or some restoration efforts to make it safer for animals like langers to cross. And we have seen them cross before, right? Uh, but you know, negotiations on like a scale like this, we need a lot of time and to find the right people. But before that can happen, then the road queue happened. It's an individual we've been following for the past three years since he was born. And then you'll get depressed because you'll be thinking this small thing that we're trying to do, is it even effective? Yep. Should we give up? Yep. But I, I think for me personally, uh, uh, how I just keep myself uh, moving forward is always remembering why I started this. I don't want to be in a, in a position where like, I'm all over the place but nothing manifests, right? How do we coexist harmoniously as humans and with like, the wildlife that's living around us? Under the Jane Goodall Institute, uh, there's a program in place called the Monkey Guards Program who train people to like deter macaques safely and respectfully. One of them is actually also Mandai, which uh, we will be going to next in the Exciting. afternoon. So I will be... Yes. You will be the monkey. I'm so... <laughs> when you are doing monkey guarding, part of the training is to understand why macaques are doing what they are doing. Only if we get a good sense of that, can we intervene in a safe way. Yeah. If we were out and we saw this macaque, yeah. what do you think he's trying to communicate? I'm gorgeous. <laughs> Jaw droppingly gorgeous. And <laughs> well, notice that his teeth yes. are warning. Warning yawn. This is how you tell the difference when an animal is not comfortable with the presence of an individual. How would I behave when I see one of these animals like around? Usually I will just stick to three basic rules. You always abide to two to three meter distance. There's an alternative path, take it. Especially when it comes to macaques, uh, do not feed that one act of feeding becomes something that they become reliant to. The third one, of course it sounds easier said than done, trying to stay calm. Try your best not to like run, not to scream, not to do very big, big actions. We're going to do a couple of situational tests for you. Okay, you're walking on the park. Yes. Uh, you have a backpack with you. I have a backpack, okay, yes. Uh, and then, but you happen to be holding a bubble tea. One young juvenile is starting to approach you. How would you <laughs> I will... I will finish up all my bubble tea very quickly. Is it an upsize XL bubble tea? Okay, I will put the bubble tea in my bag and then I will do this. Don't turn your yeah, Because notice that the cat was following you still. You want to assert your presence. So you're at home, you went to the kitchen and then you saw Two macaques. Oh, very scary leh. <laughs> I will close the door. Then I will go to my room mm -hmm. and call for help. Yeah, it is correct. So once that's cleared, right, the next thing you need to do is monkey proof your home. When you're not at home, like close your window. If we ensure that we aren't unintentionally attracting them, then we will not be putting ourselves in situations that need intervention. Yeah. So did I pass Yay. with flying well colors? <laughs> 
Okay, so you had a long day today. I How did. was the experience? Honestly, a bit disappointing. I didn't get to see any leggers and my text. But I think what made the experience really great was I think interacting with Kali, Andy and Sabrina, right? Who are all very passionate in what they do. I always thought that like we didn't have a part to play or we have very little ability to control our natural environment because Singapore is so small, right? The resources are so scarce. But I think the two of them really upheld that the element of like conservation and I think it made me a lot more interested in also caring about my natural environment and like the animals that live in Singapore. Yeah, animals are so cute, right? So like existing alongside them is great! We are maquette hunting. So far, unsuccessful. Give it me! Give it me! Oh, there's a small one! Okay, I'm scared, honestly. <laughs> Don't turn your back. They say he did the monkey gliding party. <laughs> <laughs>